I hope you don't have arachnophobia. No, I'm just kidding. There's no spiders in this one, but there will be a lot of webs. Now I've drawn so many webs lately. It's 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 a little ridiculous, uh, but I love drawing webs, so it's not that bad. It's a little time consuming if you like really trying to get in there and make the webs really detailed, like these pieces, for example. Here's my latest pieces that I've done lately that involve webs. Now, as you can see, we're not gonna be doing the typical like spider web, you know, make it nice, almost like circular with a little net. No, no, we're we're making our webs look used like they caught something they're gonna make them look like organic and messy and and cool and that's the plan that's the play and i'll be describing these as we go along but interestingly enough i'm going to put this in a new playlist for fabric and that's just because webs tend to move like fabric and like you know like the silk strands and i know everyone's like oh man gamma can you just teach me how to do that already get the basics done then you can go off and learn how to do really cool web textury stuff like I got here, the gritty stuff. If you're curious, by the way, how to draw like this charcoal kind of gritty stuff, I actually have another tutorial. It's like an hour long or so uh, about how to do charcoal in Procreate because these were made in Procreate. I just like how the brushes work, but let's get into the actual tutorial. And this is the introduction of our little friend here that y'all haven't seen before. I just made him just for this tutorial and I'm probably gonna use him in a lot of tutorials in the future. I just need something to like, if I have a material that I need to wrap around something round, I just made this guy just for that. Y'all can leave a name in the comments we can name him whatever but for now we are going to get started as usual the brushes that we're going to be using are the typical hard round pressure opacity these brushes is just a, just a hard round brush and the harder you press the more opaque it becomes and you can see that the only color we're really using right now is just white it's just basic easy white now i don't have size turned on but you totally could if you want to i just don't because i like the the control like i know where the brush is going to be if i'm trying to do stylized stuff i like control if i try to do like crazy chaotic gritty stuff i like like chaos. So here's our ball, a little sphere, and we're going to have this guy hanging by a thread. Now, web's kind of complicated. When a bug or whatever, a stick or anything gets caught in a web, it starts as, you know, like here's the web. It's just a really bad web. It's not actually how webs look, but here's the web and then a, a rock or something gets caught in it and then the web breaks apart and wraps around whatever gets caught in it, depending on how big it is. If it's like a bug, then just little little bits of the web will get caught. So instead of looking you know, like that, it'll have like chunks missing and then it'll have like pockets and stuff because a bug got caught in that, those strands and got wrapped up. So we are going to wrap up something big, just like how that uh, the bird skull is. So that means that the fabric's gonna be wrapping around our ball. Now they're not gonna wrap around uniformly, like, you know, here's a strand, here's a strand, here's a strand. That is boring. Remember the rules of stylized stuff. Shapes then shapes, rule of cool, don't be boring, which means don't be predictable. Webs are chaos. Everything about webs is just pure chaos. So let's kind of start from the hanging point. If it's something is hanging, webs are really strong. For for like the, their tensile strength is, is ridiculous. So let's give them just, just something to hang by, okay? This is our, our base, our trunk thread. Now this is actually several threads wound around each other like a cord. So this one's gonna be our thickest, our thickest thread and it's gonna have little branching threads coming out around because all these webs, all these nets and fabrics and threads are all converging and twisting up to make it hang like this. So we're gonna get our, our point here and we're gonna, we're gonna focus on gravity a bit, you know? If it's just a sphere and it's hanging straight down, we could say the topmost part is our our thread. But but if there's multiple threads, which you can totally do, like the, like the bird, you can have offset hanging threads, which means there's some on different sides, which I would totally suggest. It looks really realistic and really cool, but it really depends on the scene you're trying to draw. In this instance, we're gonna be using a main one and then maybe a couple, like one or two smaller ones. So this one's gonna be a lot of just random kind of sketching at first. We're just gonna make a mess. We're, that's the point. We're, make, we're gonna intentionally make a mess of our ball here. And we're gonna have just, we're gonna be sketching. And I don't usually sketch very often in these tutorials because it's not very structured, but we're making webs here. Webs are messy. If you sketch, you give yourself the ability to introduce chaos into your into your work. So we're gonna have these webs wrapping around this ball, but not like, you know, like a blanket. It's gonna be random. So we're gonna have chunks that are bigger and thicker than the other ones, and we're gonna have pockets, and they're gonna come down and wrap around the bottom in strange ways. And we're gonna have just some chunks that haven't been touched by webs at all, and some have a lot of webs on them. And we're gonna have some branching parts that come out like this. And let's add some more width to our, our main 
our main thread, the strongest one, the one with all the threads on it. And also, usually whenever webs bunch up, they can roll, kind of like uh, like hair or briars or thorns and stuff, or just or or nets. So you can have little 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 web balls, right? Just kind of hanging around every so, but not not a lot. Don't go crazy. Too much is too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So we got our, eh, we might just hit with, with like, like this. This is uniform. This is bam, bam, bam. That means it's predictable. We don't like predictable. Remember, we're constantly fighting predictable. So the main thing we're going to be thinking about is sort of like how, if imagine you have an actual like blanket and you're holding the blanket with between four people. Right, that's you and you're, you're all holding a corner of the blanket. Then someone drops a ball into the blanket and then you all pretty much just let go. The ball is gonna be stuck in the blanket, just like that. And so someone, someone can be just holding this blanket from one point and that's sort of the mindset you gotta have in this instance. So we're gonna have a thread and then some branching threads coming out to wrap around whatever object it is. And then there's also, because webs you know have those connecting threads there's also going to be threads connecting these and remember don't make them uniform so don't go bum 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 because it, if it's like a, a railroad track where you know okay every so often is going to be a thread that's uniform that's predictable it's not chaotic and it's definitely not what we want and you're going to like make your brush even smaller if you can and really just vary where these threads are and just start sort of connecting lines if you find lines that don't have a connection Connect them. We're still sketching right now. We haven't really like started any real rendering or, 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 or brushing. We're just sketching at the moment. We're going to keep sketching for just a little while longer. But you can already sort of see how it's all kind of going down. Now I'm going to have some kind of coming down here attached to like the grass down here. Now also thread does have weight. So if for example, we have a main line tied to a, a ball, like a wrecking ball, and it's at a corner here because it's being pulled taut by this connecting thread. If there's slack, the line will be straight down from the, the line with the wrecking ball. And here's our wall. And if there's slack, it's just gonna hang loose like that. So that's sort of the same mindset we're doing here. If there's if there's any slack, if there's just excess web, sometimes you're just gonna wanna have some webs just kinda hanging. So having a couple hanging threads will really help sell the idea that we have something wrapped up in a net. Now also, as you probably have noticed by now, walking through spider webs, I'm, <laughs> you can't tell me that you've never walked through a spider web. So whenever you walk through a spider web, you know what always just kind of sticks to you? Well, webs do stick depending on how fresh they are. So some webs will be kind of like, like a wet hair on someone's face. It'll just cling at a weird angle. Don't make many of those. You, you probably want to do those last, but it's something to keep in mind while you're making this sketch. Now, also, if there's a lot of webs in an area, kind of like up here, it's really thick. So let's make our brush a little bigger and let's paint in some thick areas. Just a couple for now, just for now. And leave pockets. If you see a shape like here's a thread and here's the thing and here's the point of where the thread starts, you see a couple shapes here. Fill, for example, that one in. This gives the illusion that there are several threads right there. And then you can make some pockets to make it a little more believable and then make it random. And this is sort of essentially what we're doing. Let's keep brushing a bit in, filling in a couple gaps and making a couple gaps. So let's get our eraser now. And the eraser is the same as the brush. Let's make some pockets. Let's make some of these because nets have pockets. Nets have holes that lets the air go through, that lets the water go through, whatever the net is. And spider webs are essentially nets. So we're just gonna make some pockets and make them random. You know, give them, give them a little bit of structure and just if they're wrapping around something, give them shape but try and make sure that they're, they're not too similar. We don't want holes looking the exact same right next to each other. We want holes of different sizes. We want some sharp holes. For example, we'll take our brush back and then we'll kind of fill in that to make it like a sharp corner. And we can add a couple extra holes there, a couple there. And the reason we're doing holes is specifically, and I keep coming back to the drawing, <laughs> is specifically so we can have this effect. If this is a large built-in area and you make a hole, it almost automatically gives you that, that arch, which sort of gives you that lovely illusion of excess string, excess silk. So we're gonna be having our little shape here and the holes will start thin and they'll come out almost like triangles, but like rounded corner triangles, that's important. And then you're gonna you know, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna leave this up here. <laughs> I keep drawing it over and over again. It's the definition of insanity. <laughs> There's our example. I'm just gonna leave that up there. I'll have to keep drawing it. <laughs> and these holes are gonna go all the way up. Now let's start chopping in a bit and varying the size and thickness of the threads up near the top. Let's get rid of that excess there because we want this to be a solid thread near the top. So we're gonna brush a couple more in, make it a little thicker, maybe add an extra strand, nice thin one. I don't really like that. Nope. Oh. I'm rotating. There we go. I don't like that curve, so let's keep that gone. And we can gently erase to make it a little less opaque, a little less bright. And we can add a little connecting threads. And this, by the way, if you haven't noticed already, this is probably going to be the most complicated and yet at the same time simplistic tutorial I've ever done on this channel. So just, <laughs> I just, just keep practice. Webs take a bit of practice. I'm just going to let you know ahead of time, you know, before we get all the way into this. Webs do take some practice. come down here and start giving this sort of the same treatment. Now, some of these have too many small threads next to each other, which is too uniform. It's too predictable. We need to we need to calm that down a bit. If threads are moving in the same direction, that's predictable. We don't like that. If threads are the same size next to each other, that's predictable. We don't like that. If th <laughs> this is important, that's why I keep doing it. <laughs> if holes are the same size next to each other, that's predictable. We don't like that. <laughs> Most of like this tutorial is like what not to do <laughs> but that's important you know you got to make sure that you know okay now here's a great example of something else this is going like that it's very subtle it's mostly straight but there is a bit of a curve like this this is not a web curve web curves curve toward the points not like that because that's how fabric hangs you gotta keep in mind the subtle stuff So if you see a line like this, you're going to want to chop that up a bit because having just a basic line is uniform and predictable. Every I'm telling you, everything about webs are just pure chaos. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Now, if I spot anything else, that's like good advice. I'll let you know. <laughs>
essentially all you got to do is now connect some lines not every line but if you see a line do this that you just drew earlier make sure that right there you have another line connecting somewhere because that gives the illusion that there's a, a string and it's being pulled by another string so you set yourself up for all kinds of useful things whatever you were sketching and you didn't even know it yet but you've already essentially mapped this whole thing out just find some spots to make little holes and voids and then find lines that you drew to connect to other lines don't go overboard though very easy to go overboard <laughs> Get your eraser nice and big sometimes and then just very gently go over some spots just to vary the intensity of the webs. Because the more bright, the more shiny, or the more solid white they are, the more intense and thick the webs look in that area. So if there's some very lightly drawn webs, it looks like the, the webs are very thin there. So while you're drawing, make sure that you understand how thickness of webs work. By themselves, webs can all look like that, but when they all converge, wherever webs meet, it gets really thick. So if you have a lot of webs in the area, make sure that's their brightest point. do a bit of shadow so we're gonna make a new layer make sure that the web layer is on top and the new layer we're gonna draw you can do this a couple different ways if it's a very dark piece you can use black for your shadow and then lower the opacity up here but I would suggest against that think instead of the color of material that you're drawing on and grab the darkest color you can on that or the middle color and you can just hold down alt or option if you're on Photoshop or click and hold and that should get the color in procreate and then come up here to blending modes and go to multiply and depending on how hard you press you know it gets pretty dark uh, but it is the color that you're painting and that helps sort of keep the piece nice and vibrant if you start adding black it just lowers the saturation of whatever you're painting so we're gonna find the thickest bits of web and we're gonna paint in a bit of shadow now what we also could do is actually make a clipping mask over the ball so if we paint It'll only stay on the ball, which I think is a good idea. Now we're not gonna do a uh, shadow for every single web. Now our light source is coming from the top left, coming down, so our shadows are gonna be on the right bottom of the web. But like I said, we're just putting a shadow under the thickest parts, gently, as gently as you, as gently as you're comfortable with. So try to keep that shadow pretty close to the web. 
These things are not very big. The grouped up, they do have a little bit of a shadow, but even so, they're very, very thin. So feel free to go back and kind of tighten up those shadows if they're very close. Gently erase over them to lighten them up a little better. So we're going to come down here, we're going to select our web layer, get our mask tool, and we're going to do a soft brush. Now a mask tool means when you click this little box with a circle in it, it's going to create this little white box next to your layer. White means the lights are on. When you paint black over it, it turns the lights off. In other words, erases. But you'll notice that drawing, that little sketch we did, little that's now a little bit on that mask. It's not gone forever. We hit X or just swap over to our white and paint it. it comes back. It's non-destructive erasing. So if you erase something and you do too many steps forward and you try and backspace or control Z all the way back, sometimes it won't reach that far because the memory's not that good or whatever. It's gone forever. But with a mask, that comes back. It's pretty neat. But we're going to gently, very gently, paint a bit of mask on the underside of this ball or whatever object you're you're painting on, but I'm gonna do this because it's a ball. <laughs> it's because the light source is up here coming down, so the webs that are close to the light source are the brightest, and I'm just gently darkening up the webs on the other side of the ball. And I'm just doing this by masking because it's white. You know, the webs are just pure white. So when you just lower the opacity or slightly erase, the webs just naturally darken because you're literally just having an absence of white. And it makes them a bit more transparent. So if you wanted to, you could make a clipping mask and then paint on, you know, a shadow layer if if you'd like. If your if your stuff, if it calls for that, if it looks better that way, feel free. No, no, no shame in any of that. I'd say that just about covers it. And I've already kind of done the extra credit when I made the ball. As you can see, like I've got the, the shadow and all that stuff. So it really didn't require much. It's webs, you know? Like, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching, for sticking around this long. I hope you had a good time. I uh, hope you found this information useful, helpful, or entertaining. Leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more. And thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving out of you for supporting the ever-loving out of me. And I will see you in the next video video that I plan on posting later today, actually. So fun fact, more spooky stuff. I gotta get these done before October's over. <laughs> I'm, I'm rushing. I had these three already planned and now I'm, I'm booking. Anyway, but spooky time. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. See you next one.